breakups are tough. Whether you're the breaker upper or the breaker P, detaching from a former partner comes with certain lessons, emotions, and internal work that you can't find elsewhere. For the INFJ, breakups trigger a growth spurt to their character. Yet the positives are difficult to see when they're in the middle of it all. So, how do you get over a breakup as an INFJ? Welcome or welcome back, psychos. Before we get into it, we'd love it if you liked and subscribed to our channel, as well as to click the post notification bell so you never miss a video. Alright, let's get right into it. Starting with Number 1. Analyze and Reanalyze I analyze and reanalyze what, why, and how it happened. Reflect on what could be done better, on how this could serve as a life lesson. I also vent and express these thoughts to a trusted friend or parent. It helps a lot when you have someone whom you can absolutely trust who will be a listening ear to you. I also either spend a lot more time praying and talking to God or binge watch my favorite channels on YouTube. Number 2. Reminisce while letting go I try to hold on to the good memories and accept that we gave it our all. Sometimes, people and things just don't work out but that doesn't mean you don't love each other with everything you have to give. Sadly, sometimes what we can give and what someone wants or needs are two entirely different things. The best advice I can give is to accept that it happened and never regret it. It was worthwhile no matter what. Number 3. Letting it all out I deal with heartbreak by crying a lot, talking to a good friend and trying to keep busy. But of course, that's an ideal world and often unhealthy coping mechanisms set in. Some of the ways to keep my healing healthy is to write things down, go on walks, and mostly talk it out, though it's hard as I'm a very private person. Number 4. Pack it away, lock the door, and throw away the key. When I'm heartbroken, I feel it super intensely for like a day. Then I box it up within me, swallow it down, and force myself to move on. Number 5. Learn how to accept it fully. I try to find out the reason behind it. Then I tell the story to my closest friends. I cry if I need to cry. If possible, I clear it up with the heartbreaker. My advice to other INFJs. Accept it wholeheartedly. Get used to it and stay focused on moving on. Accept that you still love them and get used not to have them by your side. And don't find or even think about finding a way to get back together with them, unless your closest friends say you should. Friends usually have a more objective point of view than you do post heartbreak. Number 6. Time heals all Time is going to be the biggest healer of heartbreak. It already takes so much of it to get close to someone, and when your heart gets broken, it will take a while before you can open it up again. Just know that you can't judge the future by what has happened in the past. Go forward with a new and hopeful outlook. You'll naturally be on guard. But if you do not open up again, you'll stay in the same place. Take care of yourself first. Eat right. Exercise. Love and better yourself. And the rest will fall into place. Whatever you do, make sure you complete yourself on your own. Do not get into another relationship just to feel whole. The rest will fall in line. Number 7. Write it out. I journal everything. I find keeping a written record gives me peace of mind and something to look back on if I ever have doubts about why we broke up or if I'm better off or not. Then I make sure I'm still doing things for myself, whether it be creating or spending time with good friends for support. My advice would be to find the balance between being by yourself to process and leaning on family and friends for support. Too much of either is going to overwhelm. It's really hard for anybody, but we get through. I feel emotions really deeply, and during heartbreak, sometimes it's hard to separate my hurt with my ex's hurt. Keeping those separate is a huge part of it for me too. Number 8. Dive. Dive deep into creative expression. I paint. I read. I isolate myself in order to reflect. I make lists. Lots of them. Lists on why it didn't work. Lists on what I hated about him, what I loved, and recognized that most, if not all traits, can be found in other people too. 
I also became what I loved about him. I cry and I don't repress my feelings. I speak to those I trust and I cycle. When my heart breaks, I make art. I always come back to art. Number nine, give yourself permission to mourn. I give myself permission to be hurt and sad and mourn for a specific period of time. And then for those number of days, I wallow as deep as I need to go. Then on the specific day that it ends, I go take a shower and get dressed and do my makeup and burn all the memories and walk away from the heartbreak. Does it make it not hurt? Nope. I'm still a little sad, but I've decided to move on and I do. The thoughts and the sorrow are put away and I choose to think on better things. Number 10. Accept that the heart never forgets. I don't really ever move on. My silly heart loves eternal and doesn't let go even though the brain can. It takes me years to get over the loss of someone and really, that's just more getting used to them not being there anymore. Just to be clear, I respect boundaries and keep within them. The last thing I would ever want is them to be bothered by me. But when I let someone in, they become a structure in my heart. Number 11. Lean on extroverted sensing but don't do overboard. When I'm heartbroken, I spend more time alone than usual. Spend time connecting with nature. Engage in a strenuous physical activity. When I am trying to process the situation, I usually use a very trusted loved one as a sounding board to evaluate the situation, my contributions to it, and my next actions and perspectives. I also tend to lose touch with the physical world, lose appetite, insomnia, even over exercise. Engage your SC in a healthy way, but don't let it run the show. Discuss the situation with one or two trusted loved ones. Very strictly use time to yourself. Not too much, but more than usual. Number 12. Long for the healed version of yourself. As an INFJ, I experience what I go through so deeply and painfully. One thing I learned is that I had to simply embrace the heartbreak. It took a long time and a lot of positive self-talk to tell you the truth. In order to get to the other side of healing, I believe that I just have to endure the pain. There will be a day that my heart won't ache anymore. Number 13. Clear away any temptation. To be honest, I tend to stick with people for quite a while after it has gotten obvious that things aren't working. Once I decide firmly that I will never go back, so I don't text, call, FB, I delete him from my phone, social media, and so on. Then I force myself to get on with my life after being sad for some time. Number 14. Find something to look forward to. Listen to music, read, plan a trip somewhere I love. I just need to find something else to look forward to. But music helps me to find some kind of outlet for my sorrow. I journal too. Number 15. See it as an opportunity to self-improve. I try to find ways that I can either improve on past problems or work not to have the same regrets in the future. As an INFJ, I'm a believer in self-improvement and growth coming as a result of suffering or tragedy. And I think that the best thing to do when heartbroken is to grieve, but then move forward and find ways to become an even better person for the next round. Number 16. Take it day by day. I have a period of self-loathing, doubt and insecurity marked by long days and nights with my face curled into a towel, retracing our entire relationship to see where it went wrong. I'll finally muster up the courage to surround myself with positive company and slowly try to recover. Number 17. Find places where you can comfortably process the pain. Walk in the woods or any place where solitude finds you so you may feel the pain uninterrupted. Do this until your mind tells you it is enough. Continue to work so you remain still connected to the outside world. It is easy for us INFJs to get lost in the ocean of our feelings and thoughts. Number 18. Focus on the bigger picture. When I'm heartbroken, I automatically go to the big picture. I try to break down what happened into pieces that I can understand so I can find the freedom to move on. I might not broadcast my emotions, 
but I do create space for me to explore them. Denial will just keep me stuck in one place. I think the biggest struggle for me is when everything doesn't seem to add up in my mind and I have to accept the unknown for what it is instead of what I want it to be. Number 19. Don't rush your healing out of obligation. You'll have a lot of people telling you how to get over it. But the thing I have found is that you have to learn your own way. Ultimately, I think take the time to reflect on what it is you feel and why you are feeling that way. If you can pick apart all those feelings, you can deal with them one by one as the need arises. Take your time. Don't rush the process because you feel you owe it to that other person to move on quickly, which being an INFJ, you probably do. Instead, just focus on yourself and remember all the ways you can live life fully on your own. And lastly, number 20, know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. For a breakup, it is a very tough process of trying to salvage everything. You experience the extremes of self-blame, self-torture, self-doubt, and whatnot, before you decide to door slam whoever is hurting you. Whether you facing heartbreak is due to a breakup or one-sided crush, here is my side of the story. I picked myself up pretty fast only after I figured out I was in for bigger, better things in life. Well, psychos, that's it for today. So, let us know in the comments below if you've ever had your heart broken as an INFJ. Also, make sure to leave us a like, share with your friends, and subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a video.